So I've always prided myself on having as much uh, security on my online accounts as I possibly can with, you know, complicated passwords, two-factor authentication and uh, two-factor hardware keys and all of this kind of stuff. Um, unfortunately, uh, back in October, um, I fell victim to a phishing attack. I received an email from a from a legit looking domain name. Uh, they had actually gone out of their way to purchase a domain name that looked authentic to a brand that I was actually kind of eager to work with. Not maybe not eager, but but I was excited at the opportunity to get to work with that company. Um, and the domain name looked legit. Uh, the email came from the domain name. Everything looked very very legit. We were talking back and forth. We were talking about uh, prices for ad inserts and things like that. Um, and then they sent over a PDF agreement and I opened it and that's where I screwed up. So as it turns out, the PDF that I downloaded wasn't a PDF. It was actually a malicious script that installed itself as a Windows screensaver and then just ran amok on my system. The system that I was using at the time was this mini forums uh, system here. We're gonna actually take a look at this uh, hardware here in a little bit, but um, I kind of want to do a quick introduction as to what's going on here. So I was I was I was uh, daily driving the system just to make sure that uh, it was going to be effective for you know a long period of time, um, and I was daily driving it with Windows 10 or 11 or whatever came on it, and uh, it was it was it was great. I never had any issues with it. It was quiet. Uh, it's got a ton of, of of features about it that I really liked. Um, and then while I was using the system is when, uh, when I screwed up, when, when I allowed myself to be compromised by just not paying attention. And, um, so this, this little, this little mini forum, uh, minis forum, whatever system, uh, you may have seen it, you know, on, on the table back here, you may have seen little bits and pieces of it, uh, when I'm doing different shots or whatever. And it's just been sitting, uh, off the network, powered off since all of that happened. As soon as I realized what happened, I took it offline. I re-secured all of my accounts. Uh, I lost access to my Facebook for a few days, but, um, oh, and they, 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 they did a couple other interesting things. One, um, they managed to get a hold of my, uh, my Amazon account, um, and signed me up for an audible subscription. And I thought, well, that was cause, and I, and I got this email and I was laying in bed and I got this email and I was like, well, that's weird. I didn't sign up for that. And, uh, I'm glad I checked. Um, because shortly after I got that Amazon email, uh, they also did an email bomb on me. And I received thousands, thousands of emails over the course of the next uh, hour or so. Um, I managed to uh, come up with a way to just deal with it. Uh, basically everything that came through, I would do it in like five minute chunks. Everything that came through that five minute chunk, select all, create a filter, send it to spam, right? It was it was fine. I mitigated that, that, that issue pretty quickly, but um, but anyway, so I managed to get my, my Amazon account back. They, they got into my Facebook account. I lost access to that for a few days. Um, but more than that, it, it gave me, it gave me just a real sour feeling about this device. Uh, obviously not this device's fault. Uh, this device didn't do anything wrong. Um, but I just, that, that's kind of how my brain works. If something negative happens, I don't want that thing around me anymore. Um, I had it happen with this. I had an issue with a uh, with an earbud company recently uh, that I've still got the earbuds, but I was like, I don't want them. Gave them to my wife. She loves them. Anyway, so this has been sitting uh, kind of in the background of these videos and on shelves and whatever since October. And uh, I've decided what I want to do with this, and that is set up a system called Chasm. Now, we've talked about Chasm very briefly in the past. I just kind of did a couple of quick videos on it. But what I want to do is actually do a full setup with Chasm on this uh, mini forum or minis, minis forum, uh, small forward factor PC. Um, again, we're going to take a look at the hardware uh, here in just a little bit, but uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Proxmox on it uh, just so that I can have backups and that sort of thing and easy administration of of, of the base, the, 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 the base operating system. We're going to throw Ubuntu on it. We're going to then throw Chasm on it. We're going to go through several steps on how we can deploy certain things so that we don't necessarily have to fall victim the way I did. Uh, if we've got an attachment we're not sure about, we can spin up an isolated container, a desktop container, whether it's, you know, Linux or whatever, and, and isolate all of our different things so that we can be extra, extra secure with what we're doing uh, when we're dealing with files or browsing or research or whatever. We can spin something up, do our task, and then shut it down and not have to worry about any kind of potential issues like I faced back in October. So with that said, uh, let's actually tear this thing apart. Let's look at the hardware inside of it. Um, and then uh, once we're kind of done with that, uh, we'll kind of move on to our next steps 
And um, this will obviously be a multi-part video series, but I wanted to do an introduction as to why I'm doing with this hardware what I'm doing, why I chose this. This is overkill. It absolutely is. But uh, it's going to, I think, reset some things in my brain and make it an acceptable piece of hardware to use again um, because of what I'm going to do with it. So enough of me jabbering. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware inside. Okay, so this is the Minis Forum uh, Mini PC, uh, as we can see here, we kind of took a look at it. In the intro to this video, um, we flip over to the front. Uh, here we've got um, a reset button, super speed USB 3.1, I believe, a headphone, microphone, USB-C, illuminated power button right there. Um, nothing much going on on either uh, either side here. Nothing really going on there. So on the back, we've got a Kensington lock, a barrel jack for 19 volts. Um, two display port, two HDMI ports. Uh, I will put specs on the screen so we can see that. Again, another headphone and microphone jack. I appreciate seeing that on both the front and the back of a mini PC. Uh, I really, really do appreciate that. Again here, we've got a two and a half gig uh, LAN port, which is great, as well as some more super speed ports there as well. Um, and that's really all you're gonna get from IO, which, I, which is just perfectly fine in my opinion. Uh, if you weren't sure, this is the Model HX90, um, again, from Mini's Forum. I've already taken the four screws out. This did come with a mounting thing, so you could put this like on the back of a monitor if you wanted to store it there. Um, but that's what's kind of going on there. Uh, again, I've already taken out the four screws, so let's go ahead and pop this off like so and here we go so <clears throat> it came with this 500 512 gig uh, nvme drive right there i added the two crucial crucial drives here so that we can have uh, some storage uh, on our system when we're ready to actually install our os uh, we do need to take out this screw right there so we can take this out though so let me find a screwdriver so we're gonna go ahead and pull out this screw maybe there it goes And we'll set that right there. And then this whole thing just kind of lifts out like so. And uh, we've got a ribbon cable that attaches the IO to the motherboard here. Um, what we're gonna do is just flip this over real quick. And right here is uh, obviously our, our CPU cooler. Uh, we've got our RTC battery. We've got another uh, system fan header there if we wanted to use that. And right here, we've got uh, our RAM. Uh, and this is actually sporting uh, two 16 gig sticks of uh, uh, Kingston RAM. So we're good to go there. So we've got 32 gigs of RAM. We've got a 512 gig boot drive and uh, two one terabyte uh, crucial SSDs here. That's all there is inside this as far as serviceability is concerned. Uh, of course, you can you know, upgrade the drives and the RAM and that's it. No, nothing beyond that. Um, so with that, uh, kind of taken apart and looked at in, as, as far as the internals are concerned. Let's get it put back together and let's throw Proxmox on it. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the hardware we're going to use uh, for our new Chasm setup, uh, of course, our next step will be to get Proxmox set up on a USB. I've got just a little uh, thumb drive here. I don't know, this is like a 128 or a 64. It's, it's well within uh, the, uh, the specifications we're gonna need to create our bootable uh, USB. So the first thing, of course, we wanna do is go over to proxmox.com slash en slash downloads, or you can just go to proxmox.com and click on the downloads page. And you can be brought here. Uh, we can see that we've got Proxmox uh, VE 7.3 ISO installer. So that's the one we want to download. Of course, I've already done that. It's already on my desktop. So we're good to go to our next steps. Um, so of course we need uh, an application of some variety to uh, to actually copy the ISO over to our USB. Um, I like to use Bellina Etcher. You can use Rufus or whatever your favorite um, uh, USB Etcher style program is. Again, I'm going to use Bellina. So I'm going to click flash from file. I'm gonna to go to my desktop because that's where I've got the ISO. I'll click open. Now it wants me to select a target, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my USB drive and I'll sl uh, click select target. We'll give this just a second here. I guess I just didn't plug it in the right way. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and minimize that and come back over to here, select our target. There it is. There's our 128 gig. I, I seriously just unplugged it, plugged it back in. Sometimes you got to do that, I guess. So we'll click select, and then we're going to click flash. Ooh, that was loud. I apologize for that. Uh, we'll click yes. 
It'll give this just a minute here uh, to go through its uh, through its its etching, its burning, its copying process. This is going to go relatively quickly, so uh, we'll go ahead and let this finish up, and then we'll come back. Okay, so there we go. It looks like our, our flash has completed, so that's good to go. We can pull this out and put it in in our uh, in our PC, which is actually behind me on my server rack. Uh, I'm gonna access this via uh, my my uh, Tiny Pilot KVM solution. I built a, I made a video on a year or something ago, um, and then we're gonna boot up and uh, get uh, Proxmox installed on our device. Okay, so I've got Tiny Pilot up on my screen. I've got my USB plugged in, so I'm gonna jump over here. I'm gonna press the power button. And now we're going to hope that this works and it pops up on my screen over here. Uh, we'll give this just a second to boot up and we'll see what happens. Ah, there we go. Okay, so a <laughs> uh, little, little, little finagling there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just tapping the delete button so that uh, I can get in and change the boot order. That's all I'm gonna do here. But since we're here, uh, we can see that uh, we've got 32 gigs of RAM as we already uh, talked about. Let's see, CPU information. It's a Ryzen uh, 9 5900 HX with Radeon graphics at 3.3 gigahertz or 3341 megahertz. Uh, you can kind of look at that either way, but what we wanna do is come over here to the boot and I wanna change uh, that to that, like so, um, and then I wanna disable some of this other stuff. Um, I'm gonna disable that, disable that. Uh, save and exit, save and exit, and hopefully, yay, there we go, all right. So now we're gonna go ahead and install uh, Proxmox VE. We're gonna click go. Uh, we're just gonna kinda run through this real quick. I've already made a video about installing Proxmox, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and run through this just real quick and uh, see if we can't get this installed so that we can move forward with getting our new Chasm system installed. So we've got some isolation uh, it, or, or the ability to spin up some containers for isolation, uh, for, for testing, for building, for reverse engineering, uh, for opening documents that maybe we're not too sure about like I did and kind of what, what sparked this whole thing. So give this just a minute here. So since we're here, uh, I, I just thought I would take a second to kind of explain the idea behind why Chasm was developed. So basically the idea was it was developed so that um, security engineers, uh, people who are doing mal malware analysis, uh, payload developers, things like that, could could spin up an instance of whatever it is that they need, whether it's, you know, Kali Linux or Ubuntu, or they need uh, a code editor or whatever the case is, they could spin one up quickly and easily, uh, but still keep that, uh, that environment isolated so that they can do their job without having to worry about any kind of um, you know, infiltration of their network and things like that from whatever it is they're working on. And that's really what gave me the idea to use this device, again, because of my stupid brain. Um, because it was compromised with malware, I want to use this as a way to make sure that that doesn't happen again on my network. So that's just kind of a, a little bit of background on Chasm. It was developed with um, security and, and malware analysis and things like that in mind to keep those people doing those jobs safe. Okay, so here we are. Uh, let's actually, you know what, let's do this. Let's come back up to view and let's go full screen. Cool, so here we are. We're installing Proxmox uh, on our little mini PC here. Of course, I agree to, to all of this. I'm gonna come down and click, I agree. Um, and then I have to decide where I want to install this. Uh, here we can see my 500 gig uh, and my two one terabytes. Of course, I want to put this on the on the 500 gig. That's the NVMe drive. Uh, we're gonna we're actually gonna use both of those one terabyte drives in tandem with each other here in a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. I'm gonna select my time zone, uh, which is Denver is pretty close. We're gonna run with that. Of course, you'll choose your time zone. I'm gonna put in my password and an email address, and I'll click next. So uh, now I have to decide on my host name for this, basically. Um, you know, it's got a PVE example invalid and then an IP address and that sort of thing. Uh, this is all fine, but I do wanna change this. I'm gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call this isolation. Wow, if I could type isolation.local, like so. Um, and then all of this looks fine. I just need to remember that on that I'll be on uh, 0.184 there, that's fine. And then I'll click next. And here it's just like, hey, make sure all this looks good, read through all of this. If you're happy with all of this, uh, we can go ahead and click on install. And it's gonna go through the installation process, creating partitions and all of that kind of stuff. So once this is done, we'll come back and move on to our next steps.
Okay, so we finally got some progress. It stuck at 3% for so long, I thought there was actually a problem. I almost intervened, luckily I didn't. Um, so now uh, what we're gonna do is uh, see if we can't get back in to our, uh, to our BIOS here so that we can uh, change the boot order or check the boot order to make sure that uh, it's going to boot from the hard drive instead of from, yeah, see that's, I am, um, Glad I checked, that one needs to be NVMe Proxmox like so. Save and exit, save configuration. Now it's gonna go ahead and boot up. While that's doing its thing, I'm gonna go pull that USB out so I don't forget that's where I put it. So, one second. Okay, USB has been retrieved, so we're gonna go there. We're gonna give this a second, there it goes. All right, so we're at 192.168.184, um, or 0 0.184 rather, on port 8006. So let's exit out of there. There we go, advanced, proceed, cool. So our username obviously gonna be root and our password is the password that we used uh, or that we, we created when we did the installation. And uh, then we'll just say log in. We don't have a valid subscription, that's fine, not a big deal. Okay, so here we are, we're logged in. Uh, what we wanna do next is actually go to our node here. Uh, come down to where it says ZFS. We're going to create ZFS. Uh, and then I'm just gonna call this storage, like so. We're gonna switch this to mirror. Uh, then we're gonna select our uh, two one terabyte drives here, like so, uh, and that should be fine. We're gonna go ahead and click on create. So now it's gonna go ahead and create our, our ZFS pool here. Uh, once we're done with that, we can actually go back uh, over to uh, data center. We'll go to storage. We're gonna add a storage. Again, we're gonna select ZFS here. Uh, I'm gonna call this storage. Our ZFS pool will be storage uh, nodes. Um, I don't know that we need to restrict it, but we're gonna go ahead and just put it on isolation like so. So I think all of this looks good. Uh, what we're gonna do, backup retention, we're gonna deal with backup and retention right now. We're gonna click add, oops, storage. Um, we're just call it isolation, isolation, storage. Like so, click add. There we go. So now we have some storage. Let's go ahead and pop this open drag that down. Isolation storage right now has a little uh, question mark there. It is currently being built. So here in a second, that should change to a different icon like so. So now we have our, our isolation storage here. Uh, there's nothing on it at the moment. Um, here we can see that we have a 965 gigs available uh, on the two terabyte, two or rather the two one terabyte drives so that now we can start going through the process of adding containers and VMs and things like that. Now, I think what I'm gonna do normally, like on my, my existing cluster that's on this rack behind me, um, normally I do uh, just little containers that are kind of one-offs uh, that are very lightweight containers. For the sake of Chasm though, I think I'm going to end up using a, a full virtual machine so that I can uh, have kind of a, a more robust system in place. But I think we're gonna take care of that in our next video. This video is just kind of meant to be an introduction to uh, what we're gonna do on this video series. I'm gonna try to release like one video a week for this. And of course, this is just the introduction to uh, getting Chasm set up on Proxmox with some dedicated hardware on, and that sort of thing. So hopefully though, you'll follow me along this journey of getting Chasm set up on Proxmox on this hardware. Definitely don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this kind of content. If you find this video helpful or, or interesting or, or whatever, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. That really does help creators more than you might realize and it just takes just a second and it's free. Uh, if you'd like to get early access to my content when it's available, there are a few different ways that you can do that. Um, it may only be a day early, uh, it, may be, it may be a couple of days early, it just kind of depends. Uh, but if you become a channel member here on YouTube, if you uh, join uh, my Patreon or if you join dbtech.fans, you can get uh, not only early access to most of my content, you can also get access to that content with no ads, that's no YouTube ads, that's no baked in ads, that's no sponsor spots, that's just the nitty gritty content. Uh, so if you're interested in that, definitely uh, check those systems out. You can actually get ad-free early access to my content for like a dollar a month. So that's completely up to you. Um, but with that said, I do want to go ahead and wrap up this video. I want to thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I will talk to you in the next video.